So, NVIDIA Ampere. At this point, it seems like most people think they know just about everything about it. I mean, sure, we've been debating specs, release dates, and price for months, but most of those things have been cleared up now. Most of them. The price, that's something that seems may not be as correct in reality as we've been led on to believe. So, let me say this. I've written up an article, and I think you should check it out at www.moreslawsdead.com. But of course, my main platform is my YouTube channel. So I'm going to go through my information with you all here tonight. Now, before I get into the information, I will just say this. Most of it comes from what I would call my best source. But it is one source. Now, everything this source has told me has been proven correct with time, time and time again. Never one thing provided by this source has been wrong. But it is predominantly from one source, an industry veteran who doesn't want to go public with this on his own and needed someone with a platform to get it out there. And so I have. But though it mostly comes from one source, know that I did take some details and poke at them with a few other sources. And anything, anywhere I dug, it turned up exactly what my source said. So know that I did fact check as much as possible, but I have to get this information out before Ampere reviews. I believe you all deserve to know as soon as possible. In short, NVIDIA is attempting to have their cake and eat it too when it comes to the perceived price performance of their Ampere graphics cards. Basically, NVIDIA knows that they lost a lot of goodwill from their fans with the much maligned Turing generation, and they needed to win it back before RDNA 2 hit the market. The best way to do that is with a bunch of big numbers and a bunch of low prices. But those prices aren't as low, or they won't be as low in reality as you've been led on to believe. The first place we need to start is a bit of detail into those Founders Edition graphics cards that will be launching with Ampere. These are going to be loss leaders. For those who don't know, a loss leader is something you don't actually want to sell a ton of, but gets people in the door and makes you buy their other products. Let me back up a bit. In June, Igor's labs ran a story that confirmed that his sources were telling him that those coolers on the Founders Editions cost at least $150 to manufacture. My source actually concurs with Igor, and he says that if anything, that's a lowball. Those coolers, and I do mean this, are beautiful, are impressive, will work well to cool the power-hungry Ampere graphics cards, but they are very expensive. Additionally, AIBs have confirmed to my source that NVIDIA is doing something they almost never do, and that's requiring cost-down bill of materials for the cooling designs they've submitted to be put on Ampere, and they need to be approved by NVIDIA if they want them to go on sale. So this is actually something I dealt with a lot at my job in the auto, well, at several of my jobs in the automotive industry, and that's sometimes a manufacturer says, prove how much it costs for you to make this. Now, sometimes that's actually done to make sure that this is a sustainable business, that the people you're working with aren't underbidding other people only to go out of business in a year because they weren't making any money on the products they're manufacturing for you. But sometimes it's also just to make sure that they're controlling your pricing, that they're long-term going to make as much money from you making their stuff as they want to. And most of the bills of materials that AIBs have submitted have margins below 40% for any of the cards, coolers that are near the retail price. You know, $700 for the 3080, $500 for the 3070. Now, some people will now have seen a red flag pop up. And that's that NVIDIA usually likes their margins on most of their cards by now to be above 60%. And if you look at those AIB coolers, some of them look nice, but a lot of them look way cheaper than what NVIDIA is putting in their Founders Editions. Do you see where I'm going with this? I now need to mention another of Igor's lab's findings, and that was that Samsung's 8 nanometer node isn't as bad as we've been led on to believe, or at least I've led people on to believe, and that in fact, the reason there is such low availability at launch is because those founders cards have limited availability for said fancy coolers, not the dyes, the coolers. But you know, that, that doesn't really explain why AIB supplies would be limited. 
They've had their design submitted to NVIDIA for a while now. And according to my source, the truth is that there isn't technically a shortage of those Founders Edition coolers. NVIDIA could have more if they wanted more, they just aren't ordering more because they want scarcity by design, at least around launch. So now, if you haven't connected the dots already, let me do it for you and spell out the real purpose of NVIDIA's extravagant Founders coolers making sure reviewers have the best samples as they will likely be the best yields with the best coolers and at an alluring price, a price most gamers won't be able to get them for by design. They are accepting lower margins than usual with the knowledge that these published results will set unrealistic expectations for gamers, unrealistic expectations that will stand the test of time and day one reviews that will be referenced for years. But in fact, this story goes much further than simply NVIDIA somewhat shadily putting their best foot forward. It's more than that. Yes, AIB cards will be in short supply at launch, but NVIDIA plans to stuff the channels in October. So do you see? Do you see what NVIDIA's ultimate play is? Intentionally causing a dearth of Ampere stock around launch, allowing supply and demand to inflate the street price of Ampere when those beautiful $700 Founders Edition cards instantly sell out, and then ultimately forcing AIBs to sell most of their models well above MSRP due to the required cost downs. That will be an ample supply once the street price is elevated. Look, NVIDIA knows that Radeon will be more competitive this year than they have been for the past five years. And I'll have more to say about RDNA 2 in a second. This means, though, that they need to go hard with aggressive marketing and perceived price performance than they have for quite some time. But at the same time, NVIDIA's stock price is sitting at an all-time high well above $450 as of the time of putting out this video, and that is over double where it was just one year ago. If what this source alleges is true, NVIDIA is seemingly attempting to keep margins elevated for another killing early in season that ends on October 31st, by the way, and yet at the same time trying not to be perceived as the bad guy anymore. But they want to keep those 50% margins on average, and this is their plan to do it. In fact, taking a cursory look at some of the announced AIB prices shows, yep, they're above MSRP. And when I look at the cheapest one, it does not look as nice as the Founders Edition. And this is just a taste of what's coming, really. There will be 20 gigabyte 3080s and 16 gigabyte 3070s, but guess what? NVIDIA is not going to sell them from their website. They will be allowed, and in fact, they're basically mandating to AIBs that they sell them for far more than the lower capacity versions. And that's the version they want you to really buy. And they won't sell it from their website. So at the same time, NVIDIA can go, no, oh, look, our Founders Editions are really popular. They're $700. And then at the same time, most of the cards on sale are far above the MSRP, especially those double capacity versions. And you know what? I'm not really sure what we can do about it. This is, frankly, a masterstroke by <laughs> Jensen Wang. I have to admit that the logical side of my brain has tortured me into admitting this plan is brilliant if this plan is true. AMD may compete with NVIDIA in price, performance, and especially efficiency this fall, but NVIDIA is the master of winning mindshare and keeping margins high at the same time. I think you all deserve to know this before you start hunting for Ampere so you can prepare yourself for what's coming. And in fact, let me continue. I want to tell you a bit about Big Navi why NVIDIA is trying so hard this fall, and also just give some final advice. But yeah, first let's start with Big Navi. I have to make some adjustments to what I said in that last video. In fact, I'm not really changing anything I've said about what I expect from efficiency, performance, price performance, or AMD's ability to compete with NVIDIA. No, just the specs. I've been made aware of what I am almost 100% sure is the actual specs of at least one of the Navi 21 models. So it's not what most people have been saying though, at least, at least most people I've seen. And let me say that, I need to give some advice here to a lot of leakers on Twitter and other tech tubers. Don't double down on RDNA 2 specs just yet and do not underestimate Radeon. While the specs may have changed though, the hypothetical performance and competitive, as I said in that last video, hasn't. I am confident that Radeon will release 
a Navi 21 derived card that is at least the following. At least one within spitting distance of the RTX 3080 in rasterization performance. If AMD doesn't beat the 3080, they will assuredly crush the 3070. I'm sure. Also, it will do so with substantially more efficiency at its originally intended clocks than Ampere, although they may push some models a bit more to directly compete with the 3080 and other cards in the lineup if they want to. Although I have to be honest, even when pushed, I do not think RDNA 2 will be less efficient than Ampere. And this Navi 21 card, it's potentially smaller than many people seem to expect, at least relative to Ampere. The specs I've just been made aware of are close to what I think I incorrectly assume must be Navi 22, but the performance hasn't changed. I think it's very possible that RDNA 2 has managed to make some incredible memory and bandwidth adjustments that should, possibly for the first time, make Radeon cards make do with less bandwidth than their NVIDIA counterparts. This hasn't happened since before GCN. And finally, I don't expect RDNA 2 to exceed Ampere's ray tracing performance, although I never did. But I do expect it to at least be more practical and useful and exceed the performance overall when it comes to Turing. And additionally, I cannot confirm what AMD's answer to DLSS is just yet, but they are, and I've been told this is a direct quote, taking it very seriously. In other words, the software stack is simply not confirmed, but AMD is well aware that DLSS has become a very real problem for them. So in a nutshell, AMD is unlikely to match NVIDIA's die size like we all kind of expected them to, but it sounds like they won't need to in order to have Radeon cards roughly competing or maybe even exceeding the RTX 3080 while using far less energy. This in some ways will be a disappointment to those that were, I would say, unrealistically hoping Navi 2X was Navi 2.5X. It's not Navi 2.5X. But it should be good news for the majority of gamers that just want a decent $400 to $600 card that doesn't require a new bloody power supply. And yes, I have stopped just short of saying the exact specs and performance I expect out of Big Navi, but I think I've given you more than a good enough idea of what we're talking about and how competitive it will be nonetheless. And you know what? I stopped just short of saying them because I think I'm going to have real concrete and tested performance and specifications numbers incredibly soon. So just stay tuned for that for Moore's Law is Dead. I see no point in rushing that out now if I'll have the full, full, full picture for you soon. And that brings me to the final thing I want to talk about. Some final advice for you PC gamers shopping this fall. Those Founders Edition coolers are not cheap to manufacture, and yet they will be sold at NVIDIA's almost pretend MSRP, at least initially. Don't expect them to be easy to get a hold of, though, but if you do get a hold of a Founders Edition of a card, you will have snagged one of the best cooling designs on the market for a lower price than almost any other model. And if you can't get a hold of a decent Ampere card in September, and you probably won't, by the way, Stay frosty for what's about to come. Prices will be elevated and you will have to hunt hard to get any Ampere card close to MSRP this fall, but availability will, as far as I'm told, improve quickly before November, if not the price. And finally, the final piece of advice is if you miss out on Ampere, at least to me, RDNA 2 sounds incredibly impressive. And allegedly, AMD will not launch it until its drivers are polished and they know they have a software stack that at least makes it a bargain. So I know that that's not what you want to hear necessarily. You want the full picture, but it is an important message. Don't dismiss AMD prematurely. And the final thing I have to say is this. I know this video and my article at moreslawsdead.com will permanently put me on NVIDIA's shit list. But frankly... I've never planned on needing a friendly relationship with any of these big corporations. Moore's Law is Dead aims to be predominantly fan-supported for its entire life. And so I say, whatever, I'm going to get out the truth. This is the type of channel I want to have. And you know what? Good luck shopping this fall. Thank you for listening and watching. You all deserved to know.